Hello friend, I hope you're doing well today. Guess what? I'm in my new room. It's my new setup and honestly, I could not be happier with it. The biggest issue with my other room was the fact that I did not have both tanks close together. So as you can see now, both tanks are in the background and I love it so much, especially because I do sit at my desk and I work a lot. So I like to actually be able to see both of my boys instead of having one here and having one all the way on the other side of my room where I didn't see him as much and I just felt like he wasn't being appreciated as much as he should be. So now that that is all straightened up and fixed, I'm so happy, I love it, and I would love to know what you think about my new little setup. Also, I would like to know what you think about having the mic here. Usually I have it further down, but it doesn't capture my voice quite the same and it's usually a little bit more quiet when I have it down more around my belt. So is it distracting or do you think I can get away with it up here. I don't know, what do you think? So, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. This one was suggested by Diligently Joyful, so thank you so much for your recommendation. If you have a recommendation for a video and you would like me to come out with one, go ahead and pop it in the comments and I would be glad to get that one out for you. All right, let's start. So, tank decor for bettas. It seems very complicated, and yet uncomplicated. I think the problem is that there's so many options available on store, online, just everywhere. I mean, everywhere you look, you can find better decor. So how do you know what to choose? I mean, there are so many options. So that's why I'm coming out with today's video because you need to know what you should get for your beta tank. I won't be covering any of the ones that you shouldn't get. Today, I will be covering my favorite, favorite ones so that you know what to get for your beta tank. All right, let's go ahead and hop into it. Number one, silk plants. I always recommend live plants for your tank, but if you have a bit of a brown thumb and you're not super great at taking care of plants right now, then I recommend starting with silk tank, with silk plants. What's the difference between silk and plastic? It's just the material that they're made of. They're not actually made out of silk, but they do often go by the keyword of silk. So normal, kind of regular aquarium plants that you see in the store a lot are hard, jagged pieces of plastic that easily can catch and rip betta fins. These are made of a softer type of fabric, often that is plasticky or plastic coated, but it is much, much softer than the originals. So it ensures that your betta fins are a lot safer. They're my second recommendation under live plants because obviously live plants do have more benefits, but if you want to start a little more slowly, I do recommend some of these. I will have a link or two to my favorites on Amazon, but just know that if you research silk aquarium plants online, anywhere online, you will find plenty to choose from. Number two, driftwood. I recommend driftwood more than I recommend the resin or plastic structures. I did use those for a long time I used them, but I found that a lot of them can have risks involved where paint will chip off or kind of just melt away. And I know that long-term natural is always best for a betta. So you're more than welcome to start with structures that look like trees or tree trunks or um, just natural structures because I started with that and it's a pretty good way to get going, especially if you don't want to learn all about tannins or and such right now. But Driftwood is the best, it's natural, and it's not usually super expensive. I got a three or four pack on Amazon not too long ago, and I still have some extra pieces. So you can get a lot for your money on Amazon, just make sure that you boil it first. But we won't get into the details of preparing it. I just recommend Driftwood for the main centerpiece. That's always the best. But if you want to start with resin or plastic structures, just choose ones that look more natural. Number three, cultivating cups. I love these because a lot of people use them to put some gravel in in an aquarium plant, but I love to turn them into little betta rests or little cups that your betta could sit in. It kind of reminds me of a beanbag chair. So I'll take a little bit of java moss and I'll kind of stuff it into the cup and then I'll stick it on the inside of my tank and angle it upwards a little bit. I absolutely love this and I came up with it not too long ago and honestly, Alexander has really, really enjoyed taking his little naps in there. Number four, smooth rocks. 
I love rocks. I do have some in my aquarium, especially in Walters. The ones I have are called elephant, I believe it's elephant skin stone. These are aquarium safe. Um, most rocks are aquarium safe, but I don't necessarily recommend just picking up rocks anywhere on the ground because sometimes those can be sprayed or have pesticides on them from a yard. I recommend going online and looking for aquarium safe rocks, but sometimes it can be hard, especially if you don't want to buy them in bulk because most places sell them in bulk. So I got mine off of Mercari. A seller had bought a bunch and she just kind of split it up because she really didn't need all of that. So sometimes you can find just a few rocks on Mercari if that's what you're looking for. But rocks are a great way to elevate a tank's scape without paying too much money and it's also a good natural alternative. Number five, you can also use houseplants in your tank and while you may not be super great at taking care of plants, houseplants are actually super, super easy. There are a few types that you can start with, especially pothos and philodendrons. These are really easy to take cuttings off of. You just clip them right where the node is and then you can stick them in the water and they'll start growing their water roots. These are really good for decor, but they will also do a little bit of the filtering job in your tank. So you can't just put them in your tank and then not have a filter. You do need a filter in your tank, but these plants do help by removing a lot of the nitrates from the water, which can be beneficial to your venom. And lastly, number six, some of the best things that you can use for hides are coconut shells, little hollowed out coconut shells. Those are pretty easy to find online. You can get a leaf ring or you can make one. I actually have a full tutorial available on my channel. I will have it pop up here somewhere. You can also get seed pods. These are also very similar to a hollowed out coconut husk, but they are usually smaller. And lastly, you can get a tunnel. Now this is not made from organic material. These are typically 3D printed, but I do have one in Walter's tank and they're super easy to incorporate with the substrate in your tank when you're first setting it up. And it does give your betta a little safe place to hide and rest if he desires. So there you have it, my top favorite betta decor items. Diligently joyful, thank you so much for suggesting this video. I hope this helped you and helped to clarify a few things. As always, if you have not yet, I highly suggest that you go check out my free Facebook group, The Betta Fish Forum. It's a great place to post about your bettas and share your journey with others. And if you are in there already, go get in there and start making some posts and talking to and talking to one another. I also have two exclusive chats that you can also join being a part of the Betta Fish Forum. Those chats usually get more immediate answers. There's the emergency for emergency questions and then there's just the general chat where you can share your Betta or just ask some general questions. I've had so many people highly, highly suggest the group, so it's not just coming from me. I assure you that you will love it. So if you haven't joined yet, head on over. I have a link in the description. If you like what you saw, and maybe this is your first video you're seeing of mine, consider subscribing. Join me and my boys as we navigate fish keeping together and we help each other with the ups and downs of being a benefish parent. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you soon.